What's up guys, welcome back to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol SOFI, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of tomorrow's trading day, Wednesday, February 7th. Well, SoFi stock here today, up about 22 cents a share, but for SoFi that's 2.9%, so not an incredibly small green day here. Holding on to the majority of the move in the after hours, but just a slight downtick, less than one half of a percent. As always, guys, please take after hours movement with an absolute grain of salt. Why? See that volume? That is incredibly low volume for that reason. Whether it confirms our bias or goes against our position in the after hours, if the volume is not substantially higher than what that is, we have to take it with a grain of salt. But let's just quickly zoom in and take a look at SoFi's opening drive here this morning. We can see here, I mean, this was just an aggressive upside move. Nothing really here as far as scalp setups. I know some scalpers were looking at this volume weighted average price bounce, probably anticipating taking this one. However, for me, this channel tightened down far too much. And I have noticed over time that taking bounces or rejections off of the volume weighted average price itself, being that the stock is much closer to equilibrium, does have lower edge over time. So I do not take those trades quite as often. If you guys do want to get my personal scalp setup alerts every single trading day, take a look at the pinned comment and that'll give you access to the Wrench Capital Gold server. Hope to see you join. But let's move on now to the five minute chart and take a look at the volume because the volume tells a completely different story than just what we can get off of the chart, right? It adds another layer of, of depth. We look here. This big opening drive pump that brought us from about 760 up to the 780s. Okay, look at this volume. Maintaining massive volume, five candles into the trading day here on the five minute chart. Listen, most of the time, we see that opening candle, the biggest, okay, on the majority of tickers that you'll look at on any given day, that opening candle is the biggest. And then oftentimes, what you'll see is this kind of U shape, right? But here we actually got increasing volume 20 minutes into the trading day all right and we held that high volume throughout that big upside move once the stock started to kind of fade in terms of um aggression to the upside just kind of started to hang out up in this region right that volume started to fade off now listen if you're a bull that is what you would prefer to see i mean you want to see higher volume when the stock is moving in your favor lower volume when the stock is moving against you. So if you're a bull, high volume on up moves, low volume on down moves. Okay, and that's vice versa if you are bearish on the name, really any name in particular. Okay, now let's zoom out and take a look at the 30 minute, get some context here as we head into tomorrow. So you can see here that we're currently between the 50 period moving average, that white line, and the 200 period moving average, which is that gray line. So we're currently in about a 35 cent range. And we're kind of currently hanging out right in the middle of that. So we're talking, you know, less than one and a half percent to that 50 period and about three percent, maybe a tad more up to that 200 period. So it's not a tiny channel by any means here on the 30 minute chart. But listen, hey, if you're a bull, if we see a downside test of that 50 period, you want to see that hold. If we see an upside test of that 200 period, you would prefer to see that, which is currently at about eight bucks a share, break and hold to the upside. All right bearish and we see that upside test of the 200 period you want to see that reject and fade and if you're a bear looking at this 50 period that's what you have your eyes on right now break to the downside and continue to fade lower down through 750 is what you're ideally thinking if you are a bear here on sofi all right let's take a look now at the four hour you can see that this the immediately relevant level is right at around 798 ish that's that 50 period moving average here on the four hour chart now, again, we're always looking at multiple time frames, no matter what our sentiment is. Okay, so if you're a bull looking here at the four hour now, your one thought is get above that 50 period. But since it's so close to that psychological level of eight bucks a share, ideally reclaim eight bucks a share. And if you're a bear, all right, look to reject hard off that 50 period, which is just below eight bucks a share. If you're a bear, you do not want to give up eight bucks a share, ideally. Okay, let's now zoom out to arguably the most important chart of all of these, and it's incredibly relevant right now, which is going to be the daily. See here, that 200 day moving average now just above 790, sitting right at about 791, 792. Stock right now, 
least in the after hours here, right about 777, sitting right around 780, okay? In the very near term, all right, if you're a bull, your eyes on the daily chart are absolutely locked on that 200-day moving average. And again, if you reclaim eight, which is really the near-term goal for the bulls anyway, you'll be above that 200-day moving average, which is great. And then we can set our sights up on that 50-day moving average, sitting currently right around 835, just ahead of 850. All right. But if you're a bear, you know, you don't want to give up eight bucks a share. But listen, ideally, you would reject even sooner off that 200 day moving average sitting down right around 790, 791 and fade down again, looking down toward that 750 region. All right. If you're a bear, this is a battle here. You know, the bulls and the bears are going to argue over that 200 day and that $8 a share region. Now, implied volatility, let's get a gauge on comfort level in the stock. You can see here that heading into earnings, we even saw a tank off, but especially after earnings, we've seen implied volatility fall now from all the way from like 112%, now down to about 67, 68%. So those of you who own options, you've probably noticed a little bit of IV crush as of late. This is the culprit right here, okay? But also understand, the lower IV, that's implied volatility, goes, okay, the more comfort, quite literally, the more comfortable the options chain is perceiving the stock at the current price level. So listen, ideally, if a stock moves higher, ideally, if you're just looking at stock price, you want to see IV fall. Now listen, that's unrelated to what you might want to see with your options positioning, which of course, if you buy options, you'd prefer to see IV go up. And if you sold options, you'd prefer to see IV go down. Okay. But just in terms of comfort level, if you're a bull, right? If that stock goes up and you own just stock, you'd, or you're looking to buy calls, for example, you don't own them yet, you'd ideally want IV coming down. All right. So that shows some comfort. At least that's what the option traders are pricing in here to implied volatility through the options chain. Also understand that the lower that IV comes or goes, the, uh, the more potential that new options buyers could have if we see a return to equilibrium and implied volatility to experience some IV pump, which is a benefit when you buy options when implied volatility is low, and then that goes back upside, right? Because that directly influences the pricing of your contracts through the Greek Vega, right? Let's now take a look at the options chain on SoFi here today. 189,000 total contracts today traded. That's a decent sample size. I like to see as much as possible, but we can't be looking for millions on SoFi, right? That's a decent sample size. And look here now, overall call put ratio, nearly 142,000 calls, less than 50,000 puts, 47,000 puts. I mean, guys, we're seeing just about three times the amount of call bias compared to put bias. All right, that short term speculation nearly double the calls in that zero to 20 delta range compared to puts. Now, granted, it's a smaller sample size, so you could have one huge trader throwing that off. I like to, to consider that and take that maybe with a bit of a grain of salt, but still 33,000 calls in the zero to 20 delta range, the short term speculation range, and 16,000 puts in that same range. So listen, that's what the traders are telling us here today. This chain is leaning to the bullish side, but as always, manage your risk. They can be wrong. Hey, listen, before you head out, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Also, in the comment section, even if it is just more SoFi, let me know what stock or stocks you'd like to see me cover here in the near future on the channel. That feedback does help out tremendously, and I'll see you in the next one.